I'm in the process of building an antique shop, which among other things features lighting. I thought it might be more useful to focus on just the lighting in the first video tutorial. Along with the lighting for the shop, I've included some lights from older projects. I'll be focusing on other aspects of the antique shop in future videos. Let's get started. The candelabra is the simplest of all the lights, and I'm working with the base, which is cast metal. And I took a filigree and I punched out the center. It's pretty soft filigree, so my, my punch worked to just punch out the center. So I made a hole that was big enough to put it over each of the candle holders. And then to that, I hung um, bugle beads. These are uh, really small bugle beads with a eye pin. And then the candles are made from polymer clay. And the mix I'm using is 75% translucent and 25% white. And then that kind of gives you that semi-translucent look that you see in real candles. The lantern that you see pictured here is made from die cut cardstock. And uh, the places to fold it are already perforated, so it's very easy to fold it into place. I first folded it and then painted it gold. Now the lights on the inside are Christmas tree lights, and I glued those into the gold cones and then glued the three cones together. Now Christmas tree lights, it's very easy to remove the little cap that's on them if you just bend the ends the wire on the end of the cap usually they just slide out if the lights that you have don't do that you can always just snip off the bottom and then pull the light out now I then glued the lights into the inside bottom of the lantern and then I glued the lantern together using all the little tabs and now on the top I wanted to have a handle so I first took this filigree bead cap and bent the edges so that I could glue them flat on the top and I did that and then I glued a bead on the top of that and the bead I used has holes in it so that gave me a place to add a jump ring to, to act as the handle for the lantern. This chandelier is another easy light to make and it has a base that is die cut chipboard and it comes with two pieces that one fits inside the other to give you the three dimensional look. And then to hold your candles, you uh, or lights, whatever you want to use, you've got the little prong things that will fit in the top of the arms. And then what I did is I painted it gold, and then I used some stickers, and I put the stickers, they're kind of a swirl sticker, um, on each of the arms just to kind of dress it up a little bit more. And then in terms of what to hold the candle, the base is going to be this, this, uh, this little bead cap, this gold bead cap. And then on top of that, I'm using this ribbed bead because it's got a pretty big hole uh, for the candle. And then, of course, just like the other candles I've done, again, it's polymer clay. Another option would be if you wanted to hang some beads off the arms. That would also kind of dress it up a little bit more if you want to. I didn't because I've done so many other beaded ones. I didn't want them to all be beaded. And then the, uh, the top is just a piece of filigree, and I used a head pin to attach the chain. And then uh, that is just glued in place so that um, you have a way to hang it. And then at the very top of the chain, I used a, uh, a eye pin to attach the chain to another bead cap. And that's what glues against the ceiling. And lastly, you'll notice at the very bottom, I added another little cone bead cap um, to the very base of it to just kind of dress up that end. This is one of my older lights. And one of the nice things about this light is it's not that difficult to put together and you can actually run lighting through it. And I do that by the use of a straw. Now, starting with how I do the ring, there's a two inch ring I'm, that I'm using and then there is rhinestones. And then I'm using some jump rings and a chain. And then above that, you see a piece of filigree and then there is a paper medallion on the top of that. Now here you see a picture of the medallion, the filigree, and the straw. I've punched a hole in the medallion and the filigree to accommodate putting the straw through that because the straw is gonna run all the way through the ceiling and then all the way down into the ring of the rhinestones. And then the straw is painted a gold you know, to match the rest of it and then that light's just gonna go right down through there. Now for the chandelier type, part 
uh, at the bottom. That consists of a two inch ring and a rhinestone chain. There are also jump rings and then chain that attaches that section to the filigree. So the order you should do this in is, first thing I would say is to attach the jump rings and the chains to the ring before you put the rhinestone on. Then I cut this rhinestone chain into different lengths. And once I had the chain and the, and the jump rings on, then I glued that onto the ring. And I used um, E6000 glue to do that. And then I used another set of jump rings to attach the ring and all of the rhinestones to the filigree. And once I'd done that, I glued that to the ceiling along with the medallion. And when I had that in place, then I pushed the straw down through the ceiling into the light. Then I could thread the fairy light down in between in the straw, down into the area where the rhinestone is. And then I just wound it up in a circle. Um, and you can see how that looks here. That way it just, it hangs nicely. You get lighting through the rhinestone, but the rhinestones hide the wire. So it's, you really can't see it. Now the medallion comes from a digital image kit that I have that has all kinds of architectural pieces in it. And um, it has several medallions and you'll see me use uh, more, of the medallion, more of the medallions uh, in other lights. For the silver lamp, I'm using some unusual items. If you start on the left, you will see that I'm using some head pins and these are the kind with the ball instead of the flat head, which I think is a little bit prettier. And I've threaded through those um, bugle beads. And then at the very top, you see another head pin with a little silver bead on that. Below that, there are two bead caps, and then there's a bird bath. And I thought that would be perfect if you just turned it upside down and have the big part on the bottom and the small part on the top. Next to it, you see a plate, and that and the bird bath are, are, a, um, are a metal. And, um, then next to that, you see two plastic bowls. To assemble this piece, I start by gluing one of the bead caps onto the bird bath. And then on the plate is where I attach the bugle beads. Now, a trick to making sure that each one of your uh, head pins are cut at exactly the same place so that when you bend it and make it into a loop to hook onto the outside of the plate. The way I do that is I put a bead that's the right distance that I want from the top of the bugle bead to where I want to snip it. And I use that as a marker to cut each one of those. So that way, every single one will be exactly the same. I will have enough of the head pin left over that's exactly the size of that bead so that all of them get turned the same and they all end up the same length and that way they'll all hang the same length. So once I do that then I move on to the very top so now I'm turning the bowls upside down just like I did the bird bath so I do the big one then I do the small one then another bead cap same one I used before and then at the very top is where I put that head pin through, uh, snip it off short, put it through and uh, glue that in place or you can do a loop under there whatever you want to do and that gets glued right on top of that. Now that I've got each of the components put together I'm going to do the final assembly. The first thing I'm going to do is take the plate with the bugle beads and glue it to the bird bath and the bead cap and I'm going to flip it over. In other words the part of the plate where you put the food I want that glued down on the bead cap so it'll be kind of a hump on top and then to that I will glue the the plates or the bowls, uh, that whole thing that I put together, I'll glue that on top of that. And then the very last step is to put a little bead on the side at the bottom to act as a switch. The gold lamp is very similar to the silver lamp. Uh, looking at this picture, you see at the bottom I've got beads on uh, head pins, again the ones with the ball. Then there's a piece of filigree, there's a plate, and you see I've got it turned upside down. And then above that is this really cool looking piece of a filigree, like a, a bead cap type, but it reminded me of a shade, a lampshade. And then you can see a couple of um, bead caps and then a uh, piece of, of uh, metal. 
Next, I'm going to prep some of the items. Uh, the cool looking bead cap, I'm going to bend the bottom edges out because I want to hang the beads from there. And I also put a hole in the plate because it's going to be part of the base and I need that, that metal rod to go through there. Here I've marked for you where I've hung the beads from. So it's three sets of beads uh, for each uh, section that's been where I've bent it out, the three holes there. And I've done that all the way around to, there's six of those little column petals now that are coming out and I hung all the beads there. And I used the same trick I did on the last one in terms of making sure that I had the same amount of um, head pin left over to turn to make the loop by putting that bead on to measure each one of them. For the base, I am gluing together first the piece of filigree and then you can see underneath here, I put a washer to just give it some weight uh, to counterbalance the weight of the shade on the top. So just something under there that's a little, gives you a little bit of weight. And then to that, I have painted the plate gold and uh, then I put one of the bead caps on and then the metal rod through that. Once again I am using Christmas tree lights and you can see I have glued those to the rod. In addition to hanging the beads I also added a chain further inside the filigree shade and then add a bead to that so it's like a pull chain to turn the light on. The last step is to glue that shade onto the pole and then add the bead cap at the top. That will help the, bead sh the, the shade not slide down the pole and it will also just finish off the top of that very nicely. The silver pendant is very easy to assemble. If we start at the bottom, you'll see a bead. I've put a head pin through that and snipped it, looped it, and put a small chain on it, then put another head pin in the next big bead chain that look or bead cap looks like kind of like a goblet. <clears throat> Put a head pin in there, uh, going down and making a loop to get the rest of the chain. And then I am going to glue into that a, another Christmas tree light. And then the plastic part or the globe is or shade is going is made from a um, the cap from a small spray bottle. So I'll glue that in place. And then again, you have another larger bead cap and a chain. And then I will use another head pin uh, in the top, the very top bead cap, which is what I'm going to use to glue that to the, um, the roof or the ceiling and um, attach it with that. And that's all there is to it. The way I approached the rustic pendant is to work on the bottom and work on the top and then marry the two pieces together or in other words, glue them together. Now for the bottom, I started with this dome. It's like a, a dome that you would put over something that you wanted to preserve. The difference is I'm flipping it. And on the bottom, I'm attaching a bead cap. That bead cap uh, is very bendable, so I pried out the, the little, it's like a star, and I pried out the little, little pointed areas uh, to make it fit the bottom of that um, dome perfectly, and then glued that in place. Now inside the dome, I'm going to use another Christmas tree light, but to uh, give it more uh, support, make it look better really, I first glued in a, one of these uh, bead caps, which you've already seen me use on another one of the chandeliers, and then I glued the Christmas tree light on that. And then on the left here, you can see that I have another bead cap and uh, I'm using a head pin to attach a bead with a chain and then loop it through the bead cap. Now that is going to get glued on the bottom underneath where the star is and that completes that whole bottom piece. For the top piece I'm using the filigree that you see here which I've painted to make it look more rustic. I'm using a series of jump rings to connect five chains and I'm using five chains because there are ten holes in this um, in this uh, filigree so I couldn't really use four I had to or three I needed to come up with uh, enough chains that they were equally spaced around so the, the pendant wouldn't be lopsided and then I have a, uh, a uh, jump ring at the top I have a, a head pin through another bead cap and looped and then that connects to that jump ring and that's how I'm going to mount it to the ceiling the last step is to glue 
the top piece, the filigree piece, on top of the dome, and it fits really nicely right on top of that. And I glued that in place, and the light's finished. So the bugle bead chandelier is very much like the rhinestone chandelier. The difference is that I'm using two rings, a one-inch ring and a two-inch ring. And I have to connect those rings, the, the two-inch to the one-inch, using four chains, and then the one-inch to a piece of filigree that is glued to the ceiling with four chains. Now, one of the differences in this one is that you would again put your chains on first before you would hang your beads but you want to use a little bit of glue to keep those jump rings and chains in position because you want them equally spaced around the ring otherwise you're going to have a chandelier that hangs lopsided and the only way to keep them from moving as you add the beads on is to glue them in place now it's the same setup with um you've got the uh the, the uh, straw that has been painted gold, and that is just like the other one. It's coming through the ceiling and going down into the, uh, the bottom part, and I, I'm doing the same thing with the fairy lights. I'm just wrapping them in, in a circle, and that way they'll just hang inside there and give you light, but the beads themselves will cover it up. Once again, I'm using a ceiling medallion and then a piece of filigree on top of that, that where I've punched a hole um, so that the straw will go through it. And that gives me something to hang the, uh, the smaller ring to the ceiling. Here we have the chandelier that's hanging in the middle of the room. If you start with the picture in the upper left, here are all the components that I used. Um, the round filigree piece, I used two of those. That was something for my stash. Then next to it, those are hair clips. And so I use the hair clips as the supports going from the top um, filigree piece uh, connecting to the uh, jump rings and then the chain. And then for the lights going into the little globes, I use Christmas tree lights. And if you clip, I don't know if all lights are this way, but the ones I have, if you clip the bottom off, then the whole, the whole green part just comes off of the bulb. And I decided to use those upside down. So if you look at the picture, the, the kind of uh, pinched part is down and the wires are going up. I thought that looked a little bit more steampunk. And then um, to uh, separate the two uh, round filigree pieces, I used um, the little bitty cone shaped uh, foot or bead cap, whatever you want to call it. I used that um, in between. I used four of those. And then in order for the globes to sit nicely on top of the round piece, I used a bead cap. And you can see there in the picture I've got, I've shown you. Um, there's the globe and there's another piece and then the bead cap. So it's that little bead cap that's sitting in. And then I also added this other little piece in there that I just happen to have this piece of junk. And you don't have to, but it just, it, it closed that up a little bit more. It made the space a little smaller. So it was easier for me to glue the, um, the Christmas tree light in there and get it to stand up without having to sit there and hold it for a long time. But like I say, you could put anything in there just to kind of fill that space if your bulb uh, if your Christmas tree bulb is, is skinny and doesn't fill that space. And then I used another little piece of filigree and chain, and that's what I used to mount it up to uh, the ceiling medallion. And to make it look more dimensional, I printed it three times and then cut parts of it out and then stacked them. And then to just give it a little bit more space, now they are covered or backed with chipboard, to give it just a little bit more space, um, I just stuck some gears in between them and that just separated them a little bit more. For the rings, if you can't find something like I used, an alternative would be to use filigree like this, the metal filigree. Alpha Stamps is carrying that. And you could do something similar. You could either just do one level or you could do two. But you could use all the same products, just substitute the, um, the filigree that's the, that uh, isn't open in the middle, but it still, it still gives you some openings. Um, for the rings that I used. And the last but not least is the grand chandelier. This isn't particularly hard to do, it just takes a lot of patience and time, but I think the end result is worth it. I began by working on the bottom piece, and if you look at all of the bugle beads hanging at the very bottom, those are all hanging off of the filigree piece that you see here.
In this chart, if you look on the left-hand side, you will see what the filigree piece looks like when I have attached all of what I'm calling a dangle. And a dangle, if you look at the right, equals a head pin plus the small bead plus the bugle bead. And if you look at the chart in the middle, I've color-coded it. So if you look in the center, the red, that is where I have used eight of those and the green is where I've used another eight. And you can see where the line starts and finishes. That's exactly where the jump ring goes to hang each one of those. Now, if you look at the right-hand side at the bottom, I talk about loops. And a loop is a loop at the top of the dangle plus jump rings. So when I say for the red in the center, eight dangles with six loops, I mean you're going to make eight uh, you're going to make eight dangles which include the head pin, the small bead, and the bugle bead, and you want to make sure that you have six loops. And you count the loop at the top of the dangle as one, and then you count however many jump rings. So in this case you would have five jump rings and then one loop at the top would make six. And then you would you would uh, attach them to the filigree in the way that I show in the diagram. And you would keep doing it. Now, the green, you have eight dangles with five loops. So it's only four jump rings and the loop at the top of the dangle. And you keep going out, and I do make a jump from uh, the blue, eight dangles and three loops, to the yellow, 24 dangles and one loop. And if you follow this chart, your dangles in the center will be longer and they'll get shorter and shorter and shorter as you move out to the edges of the filigree. Now I will have this on my blog for you to download if you want to have this up on your screen while you're doing it or you want to print it for yourself. The next layer is this gold ring and all I've done is the rhinestone chain that I used in the rhinestone chandelier. I have glued a piece of that around the gold ring and now that gold ring gets glued right on top of the filigree where you just hung all of the dangles. The next layer is a piece of filigree. Just think of this as we are layering a cake. On the left side, you see the filigree before I bent the ends and it's turned upside down so that the, the little ends, prongs, whatever, are facing up. And I have bent them slightly in and I'm doing that because we are going to be gluing that on top of the ring with the rhinestones that we just looked at. And for it to fit better on top of that ring, and also to give you a little bit more surface to glue, it uh, helps if you just bend those in a little bit and it'll fit very nicely right on top of that ring. Now, the glue I'm using for all of this is super glue because I wanna be sure that this stuff is not gonna come apart. The next thing I'm going to be doing is stringing beads on the filigree, and I'm going to be using nylon thread. You're going to need to cut 18 pieces of nylon thread. I would make them extra long, that way you have more room to work with. It's much easier to cut the excess off than it is to not have enough. This is the most tedious part, so this will really help if you do that. Now what we're gonna be stringing on is this nylon thread to start with are two beads. <clears throat> One is a crimper bead, and the other is just a small seed bead. And the purpose of this is to anchor the nylon thread through the bottom of this filigree because we'll be putting this thread through the holes in the filigree and on the other side we'll be stringing more beads. I first added the crimper bead, then the seed bead, and the crimper bead, if you're not familiar with these, these are metal, and that you can just smash them down and they will hold on the thread and keep everything above them from sliding off. But in this case, just to make sure, because I got a lot of weight hanging on this, I actually put a little bit of the glue, the super glue, behind the crimper bead, just to make sure that there's no way that the two of these were going to slide off the thread. And then now the combination of these two will keep the nylon thread from pulling through the top of the filigree. 
Now, as I'm going to string the beads on the nylon thread on the top of the filigree, as I do each string or thread, I tape that down onto my table surface so that it won't slide off because when we get done doing all of the threads, we're going to be gathering those together. I'm using three different beads to string onto the thread on top of the filigree. One is a little bit bigger bead, which is kind of a teardrop shape. And the other one is a smaller bead, which is kind of more like an oval shape. Of course, you can do any beads that you want to do, but that's just what I chose to do. I'm using five of the teardrop and five of the oval. And then on top of that, I'm putting another one of those crimp beads and then crimping that down and then putting again a little bit of glue on the top of that bead so that I'm sure that those beads are not going to slide off of that thread. Once you have the beads on all 18 threads, now it's time to group those together. And what I did is I took some glossy accents and uh, glue and I got that on my fingers and I used that on the combo of threads so that I could get them really all stuck together into one really thin combo of thread. I chose glossy accents because unlike other glues, once it dries, it's not tacky. Now for the next layer of the cake, the filigree to which we attached all of those strings of beads, we're gonna glue that down now onto the gold ring the one that we put the rhinestone around. At the top, we have three pieces. We have a bead cap to which I have bent the edges of the bead cap out. Then there is a button with rhinestones around it and another piece of filigree. To the filigree, I am adding more beads. These are the teardrop beads and I'm adding them to all of the loops on the filigree and then I'm also adding them across each loop to make it as full as I possibly could and then I glue that onto the rhinestone button. Now I take all of the nylon threads that I glued together with the glossy accents and feed it through the combination of the rhinestone button and the filigree that I added the beads to and then I add a bunch of um, glossy accents to the top of that to make sure that that combo of threads is glued in very securely. Once the glue has dried, I snip off that thread right down to flush with the button. And then I am going to glue the bead cap that I bent down the edges of that on top of that. And then I'm going to add a little rondelle that I have that has a little hole in it. And that's going to give me a good surface for the larger bead that I'm going to be gluing on top of that. I take a large bead and run a head bend through that. And then snip that off, make a loop, add a chain, and then another piece of filigree to it. And that's what's going to allow me to attach it to the ceiling. And now I will glue with super glue the large bead onto the top of that rondelle. And that completes the grand chandelier. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that I've given you ideas on making lights for your own projects. In the description below, I'll have a link to my blog which will contain the chart for the grand chandelier beading and also the supply list for all of the products some of the products came from my stash, but most of them are being carried by office stamps.